you're going to start this with a the question that you posed earlier. Oh, yes. So is this the Cadillac episode? Gesundheit. This is the Carmudgeon show. Yes, right. Episode number 56 of the... 56? Yes. Five and six. Episode 56 of the Carmudgeon show, which is part of the Haggerty podcast. Neuron. Oh, I was so, so close. Clap. Oh, right. Oh, clap. This is the, uh, there were some really funny comments uh, about the, the clap. It, like Derek Clapton should be your new nickname. <laughs> I didn't read that one. That's because you just have such a hard time clapping. Um, <clears throat> is that the same uh, Derek and the Dominoes? That's, That's Eric, Eric Clapton. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh. Yeah. But you're okay. the, yeah, Derek Clap hyphen ten. Right. Um, yes. An- another episode of the Curmudgeon Show. My name is. Jason Camisa, and you are Derek Tam hyphen Scott. It's fun to say in sort of an announcer y kind of voice. Yes. It's weird because I think people should know who you are by now. I mean, then who Yet I am. Somehow we introduce ourselves every episode. I mean, isn't that what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to, you know, welcome to this episode of the Cormudgeon Show. I'm John Stewart, or some in, insert name of person. Hello and welcome. That's my favorite. Remains We're my favorite. glad to have you with us. Are we, though? Hmm. Depends on who you are. You hate everyone and everything, <laughs> so you might not be glad to have people with us. I mean, it would be a weird podcast if I was by myself, so I'm glad to have you with us, hyphen. <laughs> the, I'm the you, you <laughs> all. This is but the you, thing about you. En- English language is that you singular and you plural is the same thing. Unless in so you're in the South or in Pittsburgh. Y'all. What yin. is it? In, what do you say in Pittsburgh? Yins. What? Yins. Well, yins or yuns, depending on where, which part of Pittsburgh you're from. I'm sorry. Can you use that in a sentence? Why I ins? What yins do in honor? You don't know Did this? you just make this up? No. No, Pittsburghese is, this is, I love, I love language. Pittsburghese is one of 13 dialects of North American English. It's not just an accent. And I think, if I remember correctly, from college, which was in the 1800s, the difference between an accent and a, dia- a dialect is accent is just pronunciation. Dialect has its own grammar rules and vocabulary. So if I said, do you want Jimmy's on at? Would you know what I was saying? Nope. Okay, Jimmy's are uh, chocolate sprinkles. Okay. So, for example, in Pittsburgh, you don't have, you have Jimmy's. And that's, I think Philly does that too. Um, but you also have like a Jaggerbush. You know what Jaggerbush is? It has nothing to do with Mick or the Rolling Stones. Don't you fall or, into a Jaggerbush nap? You know? You know what I'm talking about? All right. So, <clears throat> yes, Pittsburghese has its own grammatical rules, including, God, this is supposed to be a car mudgeon show but anyway pittsburghese has like really cool uh grammatical rules like for example you can drop the infinitives of words so you can say like dog needs that yeah so that one i've heard before and this is like a an ohio and pennsylvania and apparently it goes as maybe as far as the bottom part of new jersey and west virginia and so to to philly too because i think you can say dog needs out in philly or needs washed washed. in pittsburgh it's worst yeah (laughs) <laughs> Carney's worst. I did. I spent ten years in Pittsburgh, and I picked up a lot of Pittsburghese. And I remember when I moved there, uh, this friend of mine had a, uh, a landlord, and I genuinely didn't understand a word he was saying. Like completely confused by him, and he was calling like, "Oh, we'll get a sweeper up on there." I'm like, "A what?" And because a sweeper in Pittsburghese is a vacuum cleaner, Obviously. and so you sweep the floors with the with the with the sweeper. So you, I'm like, "You can't sweep the floors. They're fucking carpeted. You stupid fuck." I was so confused. Um, but there are the grammatical rules are amazing. And then you have, you know, the pronunciations like up air, down air, downtown, yins. Yins is a, a fix for the lack of the plural of the word you in the English language. Okay, so yins is plural. Yins are yuns, yeah. Is there what a singular or do you just you. use you? Yeah, use you. Oh. And most O's have umlauts on them in Pittsburghy, so it's a phone and home. Mm-hmm. And then down would become don and roads are sh- slippy. They're not, they're not slippery. And then it's not a street. Street has an H in it, so it's a street. So sh- the roads are slippy up our downtown. Don't don't slip on. Oh, and then double L's are double U's. So cell wheeler or Don- Donna Seller. Yeah. Grab my cell wheeler, cell wheeler phone because the phone's got an umlaut on it, an at. And you say an at at the end of every sentence or three times in the middle of the sentence an at. So I was going downtown an at and I was going to Permanis an at to get a sandwich an at. And I don't know why. I don't get it. 
But you didn't listen long enough. You'll talk like this. Or talk like that. I don't care. Okay. Should I, I just revert to New York? Because I could do Brooklyn over there. That's where I'm from. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> what is this clap? episode about? I don't know. It was supposed to be. A, oh. Cadillac. Cadillac. That's right. Yeah. What? Wings that are black. Is this some sort of ethnic thing you're talking about? Yes. Blackwing. Cadillac black wings. That's what mm-hmm. we're talking about. Um, can I first say that I have a confession to make? Please. I, I have nine cars again. What? I'm Wait. down to nine cars. Oh, yes. You sold, uh, I sold the one rose of gold. your three E30s. The cashmere E30. I had to do it. Jesus uh-huh. made me do it. Did Jesus also make you buy it? Uh, yes. Jesus made me buy it. You made me buy it. You were behind that. We were having a nice, idyllic weekend with a bunch of friends for your 95th birthday. And you're like, hey, one of my friends, one of my coworkers selling this car over at ECME and I blah, 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 blah. And I had to buy it. So the point of that car, if you'll remember, all of you people out there, was that I bought it because I didn't want anyone else to have it. And I didn't want it to go to the wrong home. So I found not the wrong home for it. I found the right home for it. A friend of mine bought it. Hmm. You should get a, you should be a car dealer. Mm. You basically did uh, car dealer things. I did a dealer thing. Except if you're listening from the state of California tax bureau, in which case I just Bought a car and sold it to a friend at a loss. Whatever. Either way. No, no, no. You paid so little for it. I paid nothing for it. I think I think I'm going to pay sales tax on the car. They got it the first time when that car was sold new in California. I don't understand this about America. It's the gift that keeps giving. It's it's so bullshit. You sell a car seven times. Why should the government get seven times the sales tax on it? That's fucking absurd. Because they can enforce it through license, through registration. They say, we're not going to make it legal for you unless you want to get shot by the police. But I mean, come on, like I go, I go on Craigslist and I buy a $5 pair of used underwear from you. I'm not going to go pay sales tax on that. Uh, you probably are supposed to, I bet. Could you imagine going to the tax collector's office and be like, I just bought a pair of used underpants. <laughs> <laughs> they have hyphens all over them. I'd like to pay my 50 cents in tax on It's absurd. Anyway. Uh. Miss Rose Gold, the uh, cashmere E30 is now living with a friend. I am committed to figuring out this issue with how it runs. Um, I thought you like sort of resolved it to your satisfaction. N- <laughs> resolved it, yes. To my satisfaction, no. Because So if you remember, it had a low idle issue, and it just doesn't make a lot of power. It's fine. Um, putting the new mounts in made it feel normal, just not particularly fast. Crazy enough, so I bought Beatrice, my other E30, and Rose Gold together. After I sold it, we got, we got together, and... Um, we're reading the computer. You can actually have the computer tell you a couple things. Really? Mm-hmm. And what it said was... In eight bits. Oh, I don't even think it's that many. It's like a bit. It's basically smoke signals. Electronic is eight, eight bits. Yeah. I think I looked this up once. It's smoke signals. Either way, it just, it just puffs of smoke. The exhaust. <laughs> um, computer's completely happy. Says everything's totally normal. Idle circuit is engaged. And we're like, well, why is it idling at 500? It's not. The tax wrong? The tack is wrong. Oh. And having... You didn't put one of the little... Uh, we did. Oh, and then you're like, look at that. 950 or whatever it's supposed well, the, to be. The computer said 720. And we're like, this looks 500 on the on the odometer, on the tachometer, and sounds like 500. We had the two cars idling next to each other. And we're like, yeah, it's definitely 500. Boom. No, it's not. It's 720. Oh. So it's dead on. Idle circuit's fine. So I put an idle stabilizer valve and I tried to stall it. And we watched the valve open up and tried to reverse the stall. Crazy. Everything is fine, but mm. it's still stumbly at idle. So we'll figure it out. Okay. I have a couple other theories. Anyway. So you so sold the car with a warranty. I sold the car with a warranty that I would continue to worry about it. I warrant that I will still be obsessive, compulsive about this car, and I will try to make it fine. Okay. But more importantly, my friend is enjoying it. Okay. Excellent. Yep. Anyway, so that's that's the confession, and we can now talk about So you can buy a Z. A Z oh, it, uh, Didn't you say you were Z. wanting to buy a... I want one of everything. I think last week we decided I wanted an XL1. Oh, yes. And in first gen Insight. And I still want a GMC Cyclone. Uh-huh. And I really want a Suzuki, like, tin top thingy. Not a Samurai, the next one. Sidekick. Oh, yes. Geo the Vitara. <laughs> yep. And so, I don't know. There's a lot of things I want. You know what I also want? All my cars to be fixed. And mm-hmm. I want to have time to drive them. Hmm. And I want to go where, when we're recording this, this is live, yeah. Um, I'm about to hit my 25 year anniversary with the Scirocco. Congratulations! What color is 25th anniversary? Is silver. That silver. 
Yeah, what do I do? What do I get a silver car for a silver anniversary? I don't know. But dishes? I don't think cars use dishes. Oh, oh unless, they <laughs> unless they this leak oil. This one doesn't really leak. So oh. I figure Maybe like, that's what it will get you for its mm. tw- for your 25th birthday. Because I leak diapers? No, no. It'll give you a leak. Oh. So then you can give it something silver. <laughs> I, guaranteed if I wait long enough, it will give me a leak. Okay. Well, how do you feel? Congratulations. What? That if, on that your I'm 25th? 25th wedding anniversary yeah. with a Volkswagen? Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, a couple years ago, I hit the point where I'd have the car longer than I didn't have the car. So now I've had it longer than half of my life, which is really upsetting actually it's 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 um what's the word it's an invulnerabilating thing you feel vulnerable like this is now part of my life I'm oh whatever. invulnerable lighting right with you know, an e i thought you meant in and no. then i was like it makes you feel invulnerable no but you've is been invulnerating is actually is that a word no <laughs> okay it's good there, but you knew what i meant yeah so therefore it is a word because the point of a word is to convey knowledge so Meaning. i can say like i'm trying to think of another pittsburghese word like damn it i can't i could have said a word that's an actually a word that other people know that you don't so it wouldn't have counted as a word but i can make up a word like invulnerable late and you still knew what that meant so therefore it counts as a word yeah no i feel a little bit vulnerable like this is every time i take that car out this is a part of it's more than half of my life i enjoy it more than any other material possession and it's been subjected to the whims of some twat in a fucking prius in front of me who, who you know it's like weaving and bouncing off of guardrails and other cars i once watched a prius just drive off the road oh. it was really amazing it's like one of those times where you're like wow that's very close to the edge of the road <laughs> oh that's very close to the edge of the road and Did then they like got high result? got high centered <laughs> with the, one of the rear wheels up in the air how's that doing your fuel economy asshole yeah. it was a first gen prius i was driving a mclaren slr as one does and it was right in front of me i don't know why they, i mean maybe they were looking in their mirror i'm not sure but they just drove straight off the road and i was like i'm gonna go around i love this that. maneuver uh, you know, I did everything to get this thing to work, and it didn't work. Yeah, it's a shit heap. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's a shit heap is this studio, and guess whose fault that is? It's not mine. Yeah, it's mine. I built this oh, place okay. out. I'm stupid. Um, okay, so you wanted to talk about Cadillacs, and is this sort of admission that you're now feeling your age? <laughs> Speak up. Can't hear you, Sonny. Um, Over the HT4100 roaring under the hood of my Cadillac? What is that? Come on, you know what an HD is. Is that the 4.1 is? liter V8? High technology 4.1 liter V8. Oh. It was all aluminum, or it's aluminum, it's American. And it was a 4.1 liter V8 that made seven tenths of a horsepower. Yeah, yeah. those things were apparently gunless. Mm-hmm. You know, I was trying to think about all the Cadillacs I've driven. I think it's the Black Wings. Black Wings. Mm-hmm. And then I drove a 1949 Cadillac. I drove a 1958 Cadillac also. I don't think I've driven any Cadillacs since the 50s or 60s wow so they were once the standard of the world and then they became the the joke of the world and now they're back to being different but good yeah so standard of the world i'm interested in to hear what you think the era that cadillac was the standard of the world was oh i mean i think that that Cadillac used that ad slogan literal centuries after they stopped being right. the standard of but the world. When do you think that they? I mean, in 19, had a what, 1916, Cadillac invented the electric starter. It was the first production use of the electric starter. Is that really the year? Did I just get that right? It's like in the teens. I don't know if it was 16. Completely but. just made that up. But it sounds good, so I'm going to say it again. In 1916, Cadillac was the first automaker to put an electric starter in production. Is that the standard of the world? That guess, would be then. Yeah, I mean, it's the standard, standard now. Setting. Every car has. You don't see hand cranked Lexuses, do you? Um, no, I feel like Cadillac has been using a market marketing slogan that it didn't actually earn. Probably hmm. after the twenties, sort of like the ultimate driving machine. I would say <gasps> into the thirties. Wow, that was a diss on BMW. So early in the episode. I know we're simultaneous. We are either at one end of the spectrum talking about how great old BMWs are, or at the end of their end of the spectrum shitting on them i think everyone in this um, audience would say that we're both all over the spectrum at all oh. times <laughs> <laughs> but it's not disagreeing um, um okay yeah, 20s and 30s i mean you had v12s and v16 cadillacs they were genuinely technically innovative and uh you know genuinely world-class cars for sure and then i think that starts to fall by the wayside after world war ii i mean 
I don't really have a lot of experience with them, but I do have a friend who has a 61 or 62 enormous, enormous green coop thing. And when you see how the thing was built, it certainly was um, difficult. I mean, it was ex- exceedingly hand built and very difficult. So obviously it was a mass produced car, but like it was hand leaded and the amount of uh, time that went into producing it was vast. So you could say, well, it's very much Rolls Roycean in that regard, except the rest of it was a pile of shit, like most other Rolls Royces. But it at least was resource intensive to build, if not most the technically state. innovative. Right. Oh, no. Yes. And so I think there's two things to note is that one of my all time favorite cars, one of my certainly one of my favorite American cars, is the Eldorado Brougham from 1957. And Brugham. This, what? Brougham. 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 Right. B R U G H A M. That's always what I say when I spell that word if I'm typing it, which is like one of those words like Wednesday or <laughs> raspberries. That if you, you have to say it in your head the, the way it's spelled. Raspberries. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of those words. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Brougham was like twice as expensive as the next most expensive Cadillac. Um, they were sold for two years only. Stainless steel roof, air suspension, like all this crazy shit that went in those cars. Mm-hmm. They came with like vanity kits that had perfume atomizers and vanity like mirrors and all this shit in them uh and the car was advertised in only one place which was fortune magazine those are very genuinely neat cars uh and they're like a hundred hundred and fifty thousand dollars so relatively inexpensive but expensive for like a a cadillac sedan from that era uh so but then you look into like the 60s i think this is very illustrative because you have like the mercedes 600 comes out in 1963 and you look at what cadillac was doing at the same time And it's like Mercedes 600 has independent suspension, disc brakes all around, fuel injection, air suspension, like all of this stuff. And the Cadillac has none of that. Oh, overhead cams. Right. (laughs) Also. Plural. (laughs) Yes. Uh, And the Cadillac is, you know, live rear end drum brakes, carbureted, cam and block. They really Uh, stopped innovating at some point in the 50s. Right. Well, in American 70s stuff. Generally. I mean, I think people will be like, no, no. What about the wedge head? Blah, blah, blah. Which I'm sure is like a real thing. But in terms of like world class technology and and stuff that you would find in race cars in that era, uh, I think that GM certainly wasn't putting that stuff in street cars the way that some European. You didn't see a V8 64 in racing. No. But that that was an innovation. That was a Cadillac innovation. It was in the late 70s. Um. That was cylinder didn't deactivation. Work. Didn't, yeah. didn't work. Didn't I mean, work. It worked by blowing up the engines, but yes, and but something that subsequently did catch on. Um, so anyway, that is the heritage of Cadillac, and then we sort of skip over the entire era of seventies, um, eighties, yeah, 80s. land yachts. Well, uh, I think I think the low point for Cadillac has to be look through the seventies. Everything you know, old people would say, "Oh, it rides like a Cadillac," or it's the Cadillac of something. So there was. Clearly an image there, but the, the cars didn't back them up. I mean, they were genuinely 20-year-old shitboxes throughout the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Until... Th- they were riding on um, uh, the American standard for judging a car, which is like ride comfort and space mm-hmm. and visual impact and quantity of chrome, right. I think. And, and then all came to a screeching, no anti-lock brakes halt in 1986. When the 4.1, the HT4100. No, HT4100 was slightly earlier than that. When the Cimarron. Oh, happened. yes. We also neglected to mention the Cadillac diesel. Oh, well, uh, yeah. Was, was, that, was, was that actually a Cadillac? It was, was that, all of GM. It was all Oldsmobile GM. and Cadillac both used it, probably. A Buick also used it. Mm-hmm. The LeSabre. Uh, but it's all that the problem ridden diesel. Right. Which is just like Cadillac diesel. I mean, Cadillac, forget about that. I mean, look, they were trying to, they were chasing Mercedes, right? And in the late 1970s, Mercedes put the diesel engines in all their stuff because they couldn't pass cafe. cafe. Yeah. And so, you know, Cadillac thought, well, if the Germans are doing it, we'll do it too. No. But the Cimarron was the low point because that was a Chevy Cavalier, which was a rental car grade shitbox of which everyone I knew had one. I mean, Cimarron every, or is Cavalier? A Cavalier. Everyone had a Cavalier because they were so cheap. They were, you know, it was a, it was an actual car that drove. They made it 80,000 miles before they blew up, but they drove. It's um, farther than I would make walking before I blew up. Exactly. So, so people had that. And then you could have the Cadillac version, which was a joke and an insult and the absolute low point of the brand, before they reinvented themselves by rebadging Opel Omegas as Cadillac Cateras. But that wasn't a real reinvention. I think the real resurgence of Cadillac is probably around the time that the STS came out. Yeah. Was, I guess it was technically the second generation STS, which initially had the... the non-north star 
motor and then the North Star mm. motor came out, which was exciting at the time. And then all of the head gaskets went and then it became <laughs> less exciting. But I love it. You can always tell when there's a North Star in front of you because when the old guy behind the wheel floors it to pull out in traffic, they always cough up like they carbon up so badly. They always cough up like a cloud of black smoke <laughs> uh-huh. and then move. And then Quite maybe quickly. some coolant. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, that was Cadillac. Anyway, they're in a different place now. They're where BMW was a while ago. That was the conclusion that I came to in the course of driving those Cadillacs. Was like I was like, this reminds me of a BMW. When you say those BMW, Cadillacs. CT4 and CT5 Blackwing. Blackwings. Um, yeah, so Cadillac for a while has been sort of chasing BMW. And I think the, the chapter of the story that you probably missed was the last ATS and ATS-V. Yes, and I also missed the CTS-V. Okay, so the first CTS-V was not very germanic and it's it was very much an american hot rod muscle car um great i mean especially the wagon obviously i love that this second gen um but this the last version of the ats cts was pretty magic that ats v was very much like an e46 bmw with a little bit too small on the inside a little bit too tight but handling magic i mean that was genuinely if you compared and i did at the time atsv versus uh c63 amg versus m3 and alfa julia quadrifoglio by far the 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 best car of the bunch dynamically was the cadillac which ridiculous um it was a wonderful car with the how best so? chassis hmm? how so i the best I, car dynamically how so i invented a term by mistake called dynamagic and this was like a Freudian slip while we were recording a head-to-head episode with with I think Johnny was in the car and Randy was in the car and <laughs> what I was talking about is that the car always perfectly faithfully followed your wishes and so how this happened was the car is just I mean it's just a driver's car of the highest magnitude right does everything you ask for you sort of settle into a corner and you it falls into understeer like a two out of ten understeer just bare minor understeer and if you turn the wheel a little bit more remembering that understeer is where the front tires lose grip before the rears. If you add a little bit more steering, the car turned. Thank you for having that face because you understand that violates the laws of physics. Yeah. Right? If the front tires Normally have lost, it should just scrub and do that horrible... It does the opposite, right? It starts to scrub off speed. It scrubs the tires and you'll probably start to turn less as you know Normally. the front tires slip more. Yeah. The car turns. And this kept happening every time you get to the limit everything's great turn it you know you're going to miss your apex by three feet what do you do you lift up you lift off the throttle tuck the line in whatever or in the ats you could just turn the wheel a little bit more and it would just induce rotation i couldn't figure out how they were doing it so i was talking on on camera and i called him like this thing is like dynamagic which is dynamic magic so i use that term to to describe the strategy that gm employs to to manage limit handling in all of their cars c7 did the c7 corvette did this ats did this cts did this a lot of gm's greatest hits camaro camaro does this all the alpha platform cars do this just the car is just magic at so how limit. do they do that they won't tell me so i did talk to one engineer who laughed and it was like okay well you're right we are doing things and i'm like it's dragging brake and he's like no and i'm like really i'm going to put brake pressure sensors on all the lines and i'm going to catch you and he was like it's not brakes it's not dragging brakes. Why would we drag brakes in a high-performance situation? I'm like, well, everyone else does. Porsche's like roasting their brakes on, you know, on, on track. They're like, nope, not using brakes. They have magnetoreological dampers. They have a diff, a, a computer-controlled clutch pack diff. And they have EPAS, electric power steering. And it's a combination of shocks, diff, and steering. And it's steering probably that you can't giving feel. less steering input when you put more steering input in or something like Something's that. Something's happening. I don't know what they're doing. But it's amazing. Huh. Um, and so those cars were by far, ATSV was by far way better than Julia, vastly better than C63 and way better than M3 Comp in terms of limit handling and how good it was on a track. But the car was let down completely by a V6 that sounded like a vacuum cleaner and was laggy and miserable. And early on, those cars were had Q, which was an unusable uh, infotainment. Yeah. yeah. So that's the and chapter And when you available with manual? what was available with manual? the atsv yes oh yeah yeah okay good car good car with a bad engine i mean and at the time we came to the conclusion that like gm's best thing the the, the, the defining characteristic of what gm does is the small block 
had that thing not had that stupid ass twin turbo v6 in it and had a naturally aspirated small block a it would have cost less right because turbos are expensive and and cam and block, and block 1960s <laughs> tech yeah um and so for this new one we really when they've now have renamed ct4v we really were hoping that they would have gotten the message they, they did not double down on the fact that they're like you know cadillac is a premium brand and it has to have a premium product and a small block is not a premium thing even though it's in the fucking corvette and it's the best v8 on the planet right now um so they double down and they really did fix the v6 right it's i mean it's way better yeah, it did, than and it the was CT4, it did not offend me it did not inspire me but it did not offend me right it's better it i also felt like it needed a little more uh, rpm before being done before yeah that's turbos I mean, yeah but overall I, I thought it was very good it also sounded pretty decent like if startup it's a little bit like 3800 slightly oh, like buick 3800 yeah little bit at startup but as soon as you're on the go it, it actually sounds pretty good um there's a lot there's a lot of fake shit happening inside the car but outside mm -hmm. there's pops and fizzes yes, and a lot of popping and banging about they did for sure they did what they look v6s don't often sound great and turbo v6s really don't usually sound great they did a good job with that how does the cyclone sound speaking of uh turbo v6s okay. i can do a perfect imitation so you're there you are at the red light and the light turns green and you floor it and it lights up all four wheels, so you get a like, and then, <laughs> there it is. Do you hear it? <laughs> it's acoustically absent really yeah i mean you'll hear like it shifts at like four grand 4200 so what sounds like you know an s10 v6 is just that's it hmm. practically silent interesting i wonder what happens if you take the exhaust system off you probably just hear turbo noises and nothing yeah. else which is not a bad thing it's to hear thing. right i mean we mic'd it when we did the video for revelations and you can hear like a little <laughs> blow off but inside the car you don't hear that um yeah that uh, so i did the icons episode on cd 5v blackwing um because i had both of the cars i think i was sick i had like no time at all to pre-drive them and for icons i drive the cars as long as i can write the script and then go film it and i concentrated on 5v because cd 5v v8 supercharged like you know it's the right recipe rather than the v6 and i hated the last v6 and i didn't want to make a negative review right i mean the whole icons is so much more fun when i get to celebrate something than i get to shit on something um but during the course of filming we all realized we all preferred the cd4 v blackwing but so we did a segment and we inserted that but you know it was too late all the other sort of companion cars were m5 and we had to get you know the companion cars um but ct4 was just a really nice well-rounded sports sedan yes i agree with that I think I preferred everything about the CT4 except the motor. Right. Uh, and the looks. And the interior is a touch nicer in the CT5. Which one has the weird kick up in the rear window? Oh, the CT5 does. Five does. Yes. That's right. I preferred four. Does, they're so I think the face, the front, the face of the CT5 is better looking, but I agree that that weird treatment of the C pillar on the CT5 is quite pointless weird. and strange. Yeah. But the proportions, I think, are better of the overall shape if that thing had a v8 in it or even more like a straight six something more characterful than that v6 i could see having declaring that the best sports sedan on the planet yeah ct4 i i mean i think it is a genuine contender for that regardless actually uh the ct5 the problem with the ct5 is that it's so outrageously fast that you can never floor it for more than two or three seconds in the real world like maybe it's there's a so stupid there's a 1990s german rap song <laughs> i love how we are from pittsburgh to like two seconds of brooklyn but it's called too cool for this world like mm -hmm. cool you know cool is probably an understatement for the word guide but um 
that's how I felt about Blackwing. It's too much for this world. It's, it's CT5. It's too fast. Gearing, 58 mile an hour first gear. Which is weird. Because wouldn't you like to get to second? 83 mile an hour second gear. And what was it? 113 was third? Some other outrageous. It's just too long. But that's the result of it having nearly 700 horsepower and rear wheel drive. But you know what? Is that car available with all wheel drive optionally? No. no, it's rear drive only. So there's, there's first of all, could you, in your experience, driving a CT5 V Blackwing manual, get all the power to the ground in first gear? No. I think it, it might even sandbag. Really? I See, I remember being able to do it-ish. Once the tires were warm on a good surface, you could get all the power to the ground. But it's, I was never in that set of circumstances. <laughs> That's the problem with too, too much power, right? And so they try and give you long gearings to. And my thing off. is, if you're gonna make a 58 mile an hour first gear, for fuck's sake, make, make a, a 62, 60. yeah. and at least you can knock three tenths off your zero to 60. So the armchair warrior assholes on the internet watching us stupid fucks on on they're like, well, the automatic's three tenths faster to 60. Well, they fucked that up, number one. But I would say, don't concentrate on zero to 60. Just give me a short gear to have fun in the real world because. It, Try to start a it's 50. It's so powerful. Yeah, but you're still slipping the clutch to get moving on a 58 mile an hour first gear, meaning minimum speed. Yeah, but it's got so much torque, you just basically let the clutch out. The car drives away. In That's if you're going, let's say, let's say 58 miles an hour, 6,000 RPM. That means 600 would be 5.8 miles an hour. That means you can't go faster than 5.8 miles an hour without having your foot on the clutch. You mean slower. Uh, slower, sorry. Start that thing out on a 30% grade in San Francisco. That's you're amazing. roasting the clutch, right? Maneuvering it. You're stalling it because, you know, you can't move slowly. These are drawbacks to having long gearing that I just don't love. Yeah, the th the, I will say that the throttle, like, mapping and clutch action on the CT4 was, like, just magnificent. I mm -hmm. was, I don't even notice these things normally, but I noticed it because it was so just intuitive, instinctive. It was everything mm -hmm. that I wanted it to be. It felt like the car was an extension of myself i felt the same way about the brakes on those cars mm. like high firm brake pedal in exactly the right way but all, but not wooden and easy to modulate mm -hmm. like i got back in my gti and i was like what is this shit heap and, I, and usually when i get <laughs> out of a car that's not mine and back into the gti i'm like oh thank god not this time i was like wow what a, no they're really good like what a shit heap the gti feels like the ct5v blackwing the v8 does a lot of things to manage an, a stall so i think it's you know, look, long gears like that, it's a uh, high stress supercharged V8, and I think it's a clutch supercharger, so it's probably not running supercharger, but either way, there's not a lot actually happening at five or 600 RPM when you're going. So you'll kind of clutch out and you can watch the revs go <clears throat> as you're going. Like the computer's watching clutch travel going, this motherfucker's gonna stall it. And, and it'll- it tries to fix it for you. My GTI does that too. You watch mm -hmm. what it does to the revs when you put the clutch in in neutral and it, like mm -hmm. they swell and it's yep. like, oh, it's yeah, they're trying. trying to- Four mask for that mask the V6 masks that better. Yeah, it's than more the transparent. Yeah, because there were times where I would go for the gas and it like I try to give it a little bit of a blip and it would blip more and then I'd pull gas off and it got into this like out of phase thing where like it now was trying to stall on me um, on the five that didn't huh. have it on the four. Yeah. But the four is geared much shorter. Um, actually works in the real world. You get to run through a couple of gears before you, you can use full out. throttle quite regularly in the CT4, which you can't in the CT5. Mm -hmm. I mean, every time I used full throttle, it was like stabby and, and then there's noise that comes with that. And so it just sounds very like, you know, feels like you're stabbing at the gas a lot because you can never use full throttle for very long. This is in five. Five. Yeah. In five. Yeah, for sure. And so that it was disappointing because you want to work the motor and you very rarely truly can. I have a really hard time criticizing cars like this because I'm so happy that Cadillac exists Yes. in this realm this is not a criticism this is all should be sidebarred for me by saying like there's so much like you say it's so much goodness to it that i want to use it all the time and you just can't in the real world right. and that's a reflection on the assholes in the way on the road and the built environment than it is more the more car, than it is right. of the car itself right i feel that way so the m5 i was and that icons episode I yeah and i haven't really driven the m5 i haven't driven the m3 i haven't driven any of those cars so my reference points for all of this stuff is like so ct5v is up there Genuinely up there. M5 CS is the car that I had for that video. Mm -hmm. And I was really hard on it. Um, and it, and I shouldn't have been. I was way harder than I should have been. I wrote that segment on M5 Comp, which I'd driven. And CS is an or order of magnitude better. For whatever, all the little changes that M makes when they make a CS. Um, actually, 
and usually it's the, those changes happen for comp but m5 comp was great it was a good car but m5 cs is transcendent um my biggest problem with that car so I, I changed the script at the last second and i was if you listen to the words that i'm saying i'm saying like this is one of the best sports sedans of all time it's the best porsche panamera i've ever driven it's exactly what a like unbelievable Porsche levels of steering feedback and accuracy on track and just heroic chassis balance and whatever. My problem with that car was that when I, I was stuck on the side of the road on the phone with a bank because I was refinancing my house inside weird shit and the crew was waiting for me 30 miles away on a closed back road, literally sitting there waiting for me. So as soon as I got off this phone call, I hauled illegal ass uh, as opposed to legal ass. Ooh, it's the entire donkey. <laughs> just that horrible shit. Every single time I looked down, I was going so fast, I scared myself. And it was no problem to just fling this thing. This is one of these like sinuous, like left, right, left, right, crazy transitions, off camera, everything. I was moving very, very deep into triple digits every time I looked down. Whoa, hold on, bring it down. And I'm, I'm crawling now and I'm doing 87, 84. And then I'm like, I pick the pace back up, 116. What? No, I don't ever want to go that fast on a back road. And okay, I had a cop with me. It was all fine. That shouldn't be the case that you're doing 100 miles an hour just to, to just let the car exercise a little bit. And I feel that way about Blackwing too. And it's really difficult to criticize these car companies for making a product that is too good for this event. It's too good for this world. But what I will say is that the thing about the CT5 Blackwing that redeems it is that even if you're not doing that, it's still fun. It's still interesting. It's, it's still special, engaging. Right. You're having a great time no matter how fast you're going. By virtue of the noise and the, the silliness. The noise, right. yes. The noise and the right. fact that it's a manual and it's got such great brakes and the gearbox is a pleasure to use and just the overall experience of everything you're doing, even if you're not hauling ass, is pleasurable in that car. And that's why I was hard on the M5, because it wasn't. Until you were doing ridiculous things, it's boring. The CT5 is never boring. But the CT4, if that had that acoustic experience from the CT5... <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't oh. need 700 horsepower. It no, needs naturally that motor. Yeah, so that motor so, minus the supercharger would... A four, I mean, that motor in the Corvette sounds is one of the best sounding motors you can get, period. V12s, V10s, whatever, it's up there. 400 and something horsepower, 450 horsepower, 495, whatever state of tune they wanted to put it in there would make just as much power as a V6. And naturally aspirated, so you get the linearity and the sort of naturalness that goes with, oh, God. That and would be. those cars kind of don't have the same dynamagic as the last generation of cars. They don't, they're not nearly as good at the limit. Really? Mm -hmm. That's it. The five especially was... Is well, yeah, the five's a little bit um, inert feeling and it feels big. Very much like the previous, like the old CT5, uh, CTV, CTSV. Sorry, CTSV wagons, that generation of cars, same thing. It was sort of big and brutal. Mm -hmm. like they were very heavy handed, very everything. Yeah, and if you wanted more rotation, you had to do it with oversteer for right. lighting up the rear tires. Exactly. This car is, took a step back to that. I don't know what happened at GM because Cor C8 Corvette also doesn't do the tricks, mm. uh, the Dynamagic tricks. An engineer explained to me why. He won't, again, they won't tell me what's going on but there was not a, enough mass on the front axle to play their normal tricks is what I was told. Not enough um, mass on the front axle. I think the quote was, a number of decisions were made early on in the C8. Um, oh, C8. The C8. I thought you were talking right. about the Cadillac. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was no, like, no. there's not enough mass on the front axle. Yeah, there's plenty <laughs> enough of that. A lot but of no, in the C8, the, the quote was something, I have it written down somewhere, this is years ago now, but there are a number of decisions were made early in the process that resulted in not in, not insufficient weight on the front axle for us to use, deploy our full arsenal of tricks. So that is but that, the C8. What about the Cadillac? I don't know what happened. I wonder if that team I'm has moved the on. the CT4 because the CT4, to me, I felt really, I mean, I it's was great. always on the street, so I never really truly visited the limit, but. It's great. I think, I think ATSV was better. Really? I mean, but, that's but then there's the motor. Right. It's an unbelievable. So which would you high. rather have? Because you get the oh, better CT4. Motor. Yeah. CT4V. Um, mm. Yeah. The, I mean, the old car was just a non-starter. That engine was just not, it was laggy. It was surgy. It sounded terrible. Halfway through, they added all kinds of fake engine noise to it to wake it up. And it made it even worse for someone who's like a, you know, sound fan like I am. It just, it was obvious that it was fake. Mm. But I mean, I wouldn't have any of those cars because I don't do turbos. Like if, if that thing had, and, and it had the Corvettes, the base Corvettes motor, fuck. I mean... 
they're so close. You are the small block company. Like you yeah. are the company that makes the best V8 in the world. Shut up and put it on all your cars. Don't get some twat in some office in Detroit going, we're a premium brand. So we have to, oh, now we're Michigan accents. We have to do what the imports are doing. No, know yourself. You're yeah, an American company. Like do a push that made C63 great until they undid it. Yeah, which was, was AMG. Like this like rude V8. Yep. Well, I mean, look at, look at the success that Chrysler has had. I mean, words no one has said in a long time but what about the k car still st no i'm talking about what the, the hell no, i know putting the hellcat right in i mean this is everyone at stellantis fca whatever the fuck they're called now saying we're just big dumb american horsepower let's double down on what we're great at and i want a durango you know would you really think that i would ever care but put a 392 in a durango and suddenly i kind of want one um, they make some great shit and looks GM makes some great shit too, but that CT four V with a naturally aspirated V eight would be the best sports sedan on the planet ever, ever in the world, in the world. Uh, yeah. It's a shame. I mean, it's, it's it, look, the problem is I say it's a shame and a missed opportunity. And then I come back to, well, if you're buying a new car, like find me a sports sedan better than that. Yeah. The funny thing is that currently available, it's probably that statement's probably already true, even with the V6. It's M3 mm, is really good. Is it? I hate to say but M3. Transmission. You can get an M3 with a manual, and it's not great. The M3 with the automatic is great. This is Germany. And Fucking then you have nice. to look at it. Also, yeah. as long as you're not looking at the front of it, or really, this, you I have just, to get an M3, not an M4, because the M4 is just ugly everywhere. I am so disappointed with bmw i could never bring myself to buy one what did i just drive oh i just had a, i talked about this the m240i like i would love to beat the horse but it's so dead there's no there's nothing they don't do anything mm. i'm sure i everyone keeps telling me i like the i4 and the ix which is the S, electric suv to which i say you know what no not when rivian is a thing and lucid is a thing and tesla is a thing no the world has moved on so I think, yeah, I maintain that the CT4 Blackwing is probably the best sports sedan. Have it, not having driven any of the others, of course. Oh, but hold on. Your dad has a Julia Quadrifoglio. Oh, it's better than that. It's big words. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Hyphen has just said, I just, I just would like to just sum this Rehash up for a second. Rehash what had just occurred. Hyphen just said a Cadillac is better than an Alfa Romeo. I said it because it was thud? true. I know. <laughs> Lots of people hitting the floor dead. I know. You just myself killed half our audience. Myself included. But Did you bring the CT4 to your dad and say, hey, dad, try this? No. Okay. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. And then I was like, no, I, I can't do this. I, I mean, just by virtue of the manual and it being a good manual and the p relationship between the pedals for heel towing, like everything about it, you're just like, this is... It's not just the best sports sedan. Like, it's better than most sports cars. Yeah. Like, what is the list of sports cars that's better than it? it, it I mean, it's it's Well, what short. is the list of sports cars with manuals anymore? Yeah. Here's yep. here's the question. This I, I find this discussion so fascinating. Is this okay for Cadillac to be making sports sedans? Like, what I don't is care who makes it as long as it exists. <laughs> I'm just delighted that it exists. My, I'm, me too. My problem is that customers don't know what the fuck to make of it, no, so no one buys I know, it. I know. And then you, the car companies are like, well, we made it and no one bought it. Well, no one knows what the fuck they're buying when you walk into a Cadillac dealership and there's an Escalade in there and then there's a, like a XTS or whatever. I don't even know what these enormous boats are, the front wheel drive ship boxes that they don't really make anymore. Uh, S SUVs too, all the like front wheel drive chevy traverse with a cadillac badge on it which is a modern day cimarron basically uh. right so this is my problem is like you the, the reason we all understand what ferrari means is because ferrari has not strayed from a formula just you wait until they're put us Puros, on, until they're Puros purebred Sanway. i mean at least they have a sense of humor they're calling it a purebred fucking suv but i mean my problem with cadillac is that it's so confusing that this is the brand that uber made Right. I mean, you ask anyone, ask anyone to be 25 and they're like, what's a Cadillac? And they're like, oh, I was in an Uber Black over there. I was like, I escalate or something. That's what people associate with that brand. So no one understands that when you buy a CT5 V and you spend a hundred thousand dollars on a manual transmission Cadillac sedan, they're like, huh? Isn't that what my Uber was yesterday? 
oh, and I think my grandmother bought a Cadillac. I don't even know what it. Some little SUV that's like a Buick, bad, made in China, and is not a Cadillac. They don't XT actually. four. It's an XT something. I don't care. And that's the problem. As enthusiasts, if we're we're supposed to have, I mean, of course I care. It's my job to care. But you know what I mean? As an enthusiast, I don't give a shit about their stupid front-wheel drive SUVs. So I need to understand everything this brand makes. And it all needs to trickle down to the same mission so I can explain to people, hey, Cadillac stands for this. And I can't. They need to mm. figure out who the fuck they are. And they should really just be doubling down on Escalades if we're talking about profits. I think that the obligation of people like you who have access to enthusiasts and their ears you have a duty to inform them which you have done that's why i did i mean that's why i did the icons on that because i really want to again it's so much easier to celebrate a success than it is to shit on something a, um, uh, a car that is a success the, the, where the car is successful right. at carring not I, a commercial success right. necessarily yeah, i don't care if it's a commercial success that's not my job yes but you can help i can try to help you can, I can help try to people help who by, care right. about such things to make to the right find choice. them right i yes. can help them find them you know i tell people constantly buy an 86 i'm wearing a gr shirt today oh, um yeah. but i tell people constantly just go buy a brz or a toyota 86 because it's the best car they don't want to buy it there's nothing i can do but people ultimately right, but people who are willing to set aside their preconceived notions and make a statement like the ct4 blackwing is better than the julia quadrifolio would uh, you trade your gti in for a ct4 v blackwing uh yeah um it's a little bit big i really like the hatchbackiness mm -hmm. and the under the radar and the compactness of the GTI. But in I mean, terms of driving experience, I would rather drive the CT4 Blackwing than so the I GTI. I think you should buy one. Put your money where your mouth is, hyphen. Um, <laughs> I mean, the functional... Here's the story. I paid 20 grand for my GTI. I know. That's the real rub. really cheap. Rub. That's the problem. That's the real <laughs> rub. But, I mean, in, in some future world where they're less expensive, yeah, mm. I would absolutely daily the shit out of a CT4V. I was disappointed to not be continuing to use it for that purpose when I gave it back. So I really wish I would have spent more time on that thing. It really sucks. It's just a reality of filming and whatever else. But yeah. I, I mean, without question, preferred it to the CT5. Yeah, it's um, more athletic. It's more phys fizzy in terms of chassis. It dances more. I mean, the, the question always becomes, what's the point of a sports sedan, sports car, right? In a sports sedan, the purpose is to do everything well and blah, 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 blah. But I really think the purpose is to put a smile on your face. I need a back seat. I need a trunk. I need a reasonably, you know, luxurious interior. But I, at the end of the day, what, what would make me buy one over the other is the interactivity and the fun factor. Mm -hmm. And I think CT4 just off the chart. Yeah, could not agree more strongly with that statement. And we, it's weird to now be at an era, well... I don't know. I guess I don't have that much experience with modern cars, especially at the limit. But for me, the CT4 was good enough that I felt there was never a time where I was like, this sedan part of it is hampering me. Like, it's never too much weight. It's never, like, good for a sedan. It's just good, period. period. Which is not how I felt about the E39 M5, which is often mm. considered the benchmark for a sedanage. The E39 M5 feels very ponderous to me and under-braked. Uh, and so doing I could, what? This is doing, like, back road stuff? Or yeah, 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 yeah. And so I never felt truly like I was in a sports car in the E39 M5. It always feels like you're managing the weight and the mass and struggling to put down power and a whole variety of things. And this, the CT4 is just so much more well-resolved as a sports car in that sense. I felt much happier driving that car quickly. It's interesting because you, are, you have stumbled upon what happened with the Chevy SS. Mm -hmm. right? The Chevy SS was the best E39 M5 ever made in terms of dynamics crap interior you know crap build quality aside um that was that car was the first time you get you i mean the first time you get out of an e39 and into a S, chevy ss which is basically the predecessor to these cadillacs you get in you're like oh my god it's, plastics are scratchy and everything feels so shit and it's just like basically a large walmart version of an m5 and you make it 50 feet driving and you're like you're never dealing with the mass magneto rheological dampers right solve that you're never driving around the mass. The thing feels like a 2,600 pound sports car. Blips, it revs, the clutch is perfect. The handling is just absolutely spot on neutral all the time. It's amazing. So, so it, SS over CT4 Blackwing? Oh yeah. 
Mm. Naturally, that's pretty. But there, it's huge. The car, huge. Yeah, it's a big car. That's the thing that would concern me. And I never felt like the CT4 was big. That's what, I want ATSV with an with a V8 and the CT4 V8 Black Wings interior. Let me look up in my little spreadsheet what I said about CT4. Curious because I drove it so I literally drove it 30 plus 20, 50 miles. Engine isn't enough mm. was the first thing I said. This is on the sort of background is loan. That it's not enough to overwhelm the advantage of the CT5? No, or? I think I drove this first. So I said, engine isn't enough, way better than the old one in terms of off boost and blip response, but still ultimately a V6. And it sounds like it. Mid-range coarseness muted nicely. Mid a V6 has always have that 3,500 to 5,000 RPM harshness. Shifter is great. Clutch is great. Auto blip doesn't turn fully off. I, didn't, I don't remember that. Still hangs at target revs on an upshift. It helps off the line and ultimately bucks because of it. Hold on. This is four. Four was the one that was fighting me off the line. Handling balance is neutral to assy. Stepped out a few times. I didn't ask it to. Also diff locks and changes the line even under moderate power applications. Fast and pulls well up top. Though I don't like the yellow zone starting at 6,000 RPM on the tack. God, I'm picky. Same, same digital dash complaints as the CT5. Non-linear tack means you can't actually tell RPM under 5,000. Is it more exciting than an M3? Maybe a little bit. Is it much better overall? Probably not. Pop tune. Mm. <laughs> um, and then uh, then after driving it after on track and filming, the verdict is I like it way better than the CT5 V Blackwing. Feels four sizes smaller. The shifter yes. is better. Steering is better. Even the brakes are better. They're holy shit now. This is actual notes. The engine is such a huge improvement over the ATS-V, and I love the pops it makes on overrun, but they're repetitive and it'll get old. Handling is near perfection. Great ride, brilliant steering, driving position too. If this had a small block, it would be the best sports sedan in the world. But it doesn't, so it isn't. Hmm. I mean, at least I'm consistent. I think it might be. So what, what would you put ahead of it? You put the CT5? I think I'm I, I might be consistent, but I might be wrong. I don't know what's better in terms of a sports sedan. M3 maybe, but M3 doesn't. I just can't. They're dead to me. Okay. I'm trying to think what else. Alpha's just getting old it's good though it's good i would ra i would have a julia four-cylinder mm. over the quadrifoglio because i just think it's like we've talked about this before like it's just a perky happy like e46e sort of like here let's just i'll rev the shit out of this engine in normal driving and just happy to oblige whatever stupidity you want um no i think we're done i think that's the best it may be yeah fine fine ct4 v blackwing is the best port sedan Except for the SS is better. Yeah, but that's a huge. It's not just a sports sedan. It's a fucking sports boat. Yeah. That's a yacht. Ah, uh, yes. The, the old Chevy yacht, SS is the... Is sports, sports yacht category sports yacht recently winner. invented. But that's also now a 10-year-old car. Uh -huh. Almost. I mean, it's getting up there. Well, but I was thoroughly of, impressed, and I would absolutely own one. <laughs> Especially if I... I mean, the size complaint about it being too big compared to the Golf is primarily motivated by the fact that I live in an urban environment. If I didn't live in an urban environment, then that comment effectively disappears. Yeah, that's most of the U.S. I mean, we we also live in an urban environment that's especially European-sized. Yes, so I think almost every American person who doesn't live in a really dense urban environment like downtown New York or Manhattan, I mean, or, or San Francisco, yeah. I think it's it, that issue sort of disappears. So why do you think no one, why do you think you've never seen a Blackwing on the road, a four or five? Because as you said, consumers don't know what to do with it and there's a lot of baggage. If you're like an enthusiast with a sense of what cars, the, the history of cars and what they all sort of mean historically, then your images of Cadillac, whether they are V16 from the 1930s or whether they are tail fins from the 50s and 60s or whether they are like Malay's era, you know, Eldorados and, and Fleetwoods and all that stuff or whatever, it's not that. Mm -hmm. And... I think that so many people would be persuaded if they just got seat time in it on a good road or on track that they would be like, I don't give a shit. It's so good that I would absolutely buy it. So anyone who is maybe open-minded enough to put all that to rest, I think would be would be delighted, well served, yeah. delighted by the car. Right. This is the weird thing about the importance of an image. Uh, I watched a, a speech by Chris Bangle years ago. He did like a seminar thing and I went to, and you know, I basically brought t tomatoes to throw at him because, you know, he ruined the styling of BMW. Man's a genius and he was amazing to listen. And 
And one thing he said stuck to me is, is your car's your avatar. It's the, it's the, you know, it's the little emoji avatar thing that you chose bitmoji or whatever it is. But, you to, know, yeah. Represent, represent you. the self. And so then why did he make such a mess of BMW? Oh, because he was like high. I think, you know, he's one of these guys, he was like a big thinker and he's like, well, we, this should represent this and whatever. I think he forgot to say the cars have to be pretty. But, you know, he was in love with the idea of flame surfacing and all this other moving the brand forward and forgot that he was supposed to make the cars pretty. He was amazing to listen to speak, but he's he's right about the avatar thing. That's how he pushed through his ugly designs because he was such a compelling speaker that... Here's the thing, half of the designs that were done under him, he didn't do. Adrian von Hoydunk did, who's in charge now, which is why you're seeing the things you're seeing. Mm. Um, Bangle did some great stuff. But, you know, he just pushed his designers as a manager. I think he's pushed his designers too far. But maybe that's how you get ahead at BMW. If you, and if you look at the stuff that's there right now, clearly they're pushing it to get ahead, to get noticed. By all accounts, mm. internally, that, that company is a clusterfuck. It's like, you know, one seriously, everyone I've spoken to that works there is it, it's basically just GM in 1987. You know, just a bunch of paper pushers who, are, who know, know and care nothing about cars have overruled all of the engineers and the car car fans there and so everyone's vying for a position vying to be noticed and you know they all get moved around every couple of years and so if you are brought into the design department and you're asked to design a car what are you going to do put a woody a woodchuck grill on the front of an m3 and move on you made your mark i hate it you should just dreadful yeah at least Cadillac doesn't have that problem. At least, you know, they're trying. Yeah. I, and I would say succeeding. It's yeah. just up to... It's just confusing to the consumer. It's confusing and it's up to in, in enthusiasts who are open-minded enough and consuming... Who are okay with a, a Cadillac as their avatar. Yeah. Which is a tough thing to explain to people. Uh, yeah, but I uh, am increasingly okay. You know, this is probably one of the most important things that I've learned hanging out with you is that... <laughs> uh -oh. no one of the most important things that i've learned hanging out with you is you have to um judge something on its genuine merits uh which is funny because you have st such strong opinions uh but they're based on something they're based on something genuine that's real uh and a lot of people are attached to this preconceived notion or this image that they have or that they are so focused on driving a car for the image it projects or what it says about them that they are getting an inferior, making an inferior choice objectively, uh, because they are too hemmed in by their thinking or, or whatever it is that they have hold near and dear to them, or they don't have enough experience with other things. And so, in the course of getting experience with other things, and you're like, oh, this actually is genuinely better. Uh, and so, like converting to front wheel drive hot hatch formula, I was like, uh, that's not something historically. Like I was really insistent that my first car be rear wheel drive and have more than four cylinders because. I had this idea about what I wanted it to be uh, and w being willing to throw away your preconceived notions because there's actually something else out there that would make you as happy or happier is like quite powerful and has led me to places that I would not ever consider going in the past. I'm, I'm, I'm not really surprised to hear you say this because you are of your distaste for one, one brand enthusiast, you know, someone who only consider one thing. So mm -hmm. I'm not really surprised about that, but look, and we all have our expectations. Like my expectation is that Cadillac fix, pick one thing and stick to it, right? So I still do color my impressions based on that. I, you know, will zoom out and say, a Cadillac should this, or a BMW, if you're going to put an ultimate driving stick, machine sticker on it, should be the ultimate driving machine. Um, but at the end of the day, there are, are it, it's really important to just go and experience new types of things because you may be surprised and drive a Cadillac and think, wow, <laughs> I, Derek Tam hyphen Scott, age 94, and I'm shockingly enjoying shockingly. the Cadillac. <laughs> I, God, we made it all the way through this episode I, I before we reached the elephant in the room, which is spoiler alert: the 95-year-old 95 95 year likes really the likes the Cadillac. Yeah, is that going to be the title for this episode? <laughs> uh, I feel like it kind of has to be. Yeah, I'm okay with that. You're okay with that? I would. Uh, I would take that bullet. Um, but yeah, I would. So I would own the shit out of that, and and. It seems like one of those things where you're just surprised that it made it through. And it's the exact opposite of everything that, you know, you deride BMW for right. doing. So there's someone. It exists somewhere in the world. Right. So go buy it. 
effectively. You heard the man. Go down to your local Cadillac dealer and tell them you want the iPhone discount. Uh, they won't even know what a CT4 uh, V black ring Probably is. Probably not. But there'll be six Escalades on the on the lot. You can have you can have it in any color as long as it's gray or black. Mm-hmm. Then you can get your burgeoning Uber business mm-hmm. going. Yep. Okay. Are we done? Do we get let's, to leave and go home let's now? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go to our local Cadillac dealer. Is there a local Cadillac dealer? I have no idea. I don't I know don't where dealer for anything is because I don't interact with new cars. You are a car dealer, aren't you? Is that what you do? Oh, yeah. You deal in cars? We don't sell new cars. Oh, yes, we technically do, but we don't have any to sell. Yeah, well. All right, so step one, find my local Cadillac dealer. <laughs> step two, go ask for the CT4 Blackwing, to which they will say... What? That is that car we have this, in production? We have an XT5, which is front-wheel drive. And there's a button on it that you can engage all-wheel drive great it's really smart for the you know the people who are like complete car novices and living in wisconsin in the first snowfall my car got stuck because i didn't know that i was supposed to press this button to put it four-wheel drive uh, clearly a different team than the blackwing team so you've interacted with those products yeah my yep. condolences sounds like i mean sure they're fine they scratch the itch of the person who needs a car to get from here to it, there. Yeah, but then they shouldn't be drive by drive. They shouldn't be buying a Cadillac, and Cadillac should not be offering something for to someone who's scratching the itch of getting a car from A to B, because that's called a Cimarron, and that's how you destroy a fucking brand. But sales, I think, is what you need in order to. Then you make. And you, you have to make crossovers in order to you sell cars. Fine, make the Cadillac of crossovers. Don't take a rebadged Chevy. But what does that mean? Then do something. That means Escalade. Take a pickup truck, put a put a body on it, and make it at least nice. I don't, I, look, it's, it's not for me to tell Cadillac what its brand should be, but I would like a clear understanding from the consumer's perspective. What do you think would be the differentiation for Cadillac SUV that's not an, a boat for So a I'll consumer? give an example. G, when the GMC Acadia came out, there was a Buick Enclave, GMC Acadia, and Chevy Traverse were all the same SUV. The Buick got like something like 50 pounds of additional sound deadening, dual pane glass, and it was a material, genuine difference between the Buick and the GMC. And we had the GMC Acadia as a long-termer at Automobile, and it was fine. It was a quite lovely car. But you got out of that and you got in the Buick and you're like, this is different. It's better. It costs more money and I get something for it. I'm not sure the same can be said for any of the Cadillac stuff. Oh, it has leather. Guess what? So does every Kia. So, I mean, I wonder if I have, like, notes on that. And now that I have my uh, spreadsheet Spreadsheet out, is available. I'm trying to think the last XT. All right, so the last car, well, the last Cadillac SUV I drove was in September 30th of 2019. was a 2020 Cadillac XT6 all-wheel drive 400. Ah, uh, yes. Do you remember what that meant? Newton meters? Yeah. Round it up from the nearest 50. So you, you don't, can only round up. You can't round down. So it's any, what was that like, you know, if, if and 15 minutes or, or portion thereof is what you're billed for like you know a prostitute or something i don't know and it's the same thing i have um, never seen an invoice for a prostitute an imposing sleek new design i love it inside and out a lovely luxury people mover that was the xt5 xt6 but was the xt4 or the there was one that, that i was mortified oh here it here it is xt5 2017 this was a cadillac xt5 3.6 there is nothing i detest more than a con job and this is one of them a modern cadillac cimarron rides like crap rattly interior cheap controls on the center stack you have to manually select all-wheel drive this is why i don't don't even know why i have this spreadsheet because i still remember this um you have to manually select all-wheel drive which is a sin and then even then torque steer is unacceptable it's hideous in front wheel drive the rear view mirror camera thing is a useless gimmick the v6 is coarse and lacks low and grunt coupled to an eight speed that's ill programmed to continually seek the lowest revs torque converter lockup is mistimed wow i'm impossible to please and always seems to occur at the wrong moment steering is completely numb in reverse in the rain it slammed on its own brakes continually thinking it was going to hit something that wasn't there raindrops raindrops I literally could not override it and back up. This is a big problem. Handles only okay. I don't much, I don't like much, if anything, about this vehicle. <laughs> that so, shouldn't come from the same car company that Derek Tim hyphen Scott says is the best sports sedan in the world. Is that vehicle still sold? 
I don't fucking know. Mm. Yes. Well, don't buy one of those. Okay. I don't have already forgotten what it is because I'm not at risk of buying a Cadillac SUV. It's a CT Blackwing 5 Vore 7 STS D Elegance Broom. Mm. Good. Confused I've brand. Taken, taken notes on all of that. Okay. All right. See you next this week. This has been a Cadillac episode. No. Cadillac. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, all right. Next week. Next week, more Cadillac discussion. How do you say discussions mispronounced in the way that you... I don't know. I can't say it in Pittsburghese either. we got to wrap this whole thing around. There was a Pittsburghese New York thing. I don't know. I don't know. Brooklyn. What are you doing? Forget about it. All right. Deet, 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 deet. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be so bad.